Hey guys, so today I will be teaching you everything you need to know to be able to start making your own custom furniture in Real Citizens. All of what I will be showing you guys today are techniques that I have used in the past to make the designs that you see in my DIY and speed build series. If you're not familiar with those two series, I suggest that you watch them so that you can get a better idea of the designs I am talking about. For this video, I will focus more on the different properties of the various furniture that I tend to use when making custom furniture. Anyways, let's get started. So basically, in Real Citizens, you are given the ability to make your own furniture by combining different pieces of furniture together. There are many different ways in which you can combine your furniture, and I will be going over these ways shortly. You can use these techniques to make an improved version of the furniture that are already in the game, or ones that have not already been added. I recommend that you look up reference images online so they can help your design look as realistic as possible. One of the most important pieces of furniture that you should get familiar with is, of course, the bidding block. The bidding block comes in 5 different variants, each consisting of different textures and colors, making it very versatile for making custom furniture. If you like a larger selection of colors, I highly recommend purchasing the Custom Furniture Colors Game Pass. The building blocks are also one of the few furniture items that can be stacked on top of one another. Perfect if you're planning to create large pieces of furniture, such as walls or headboards. A very important use of the building block would be to level furniture. Luckily, forces of gravity do not act upon the placement of furniture, so you can make furniture float just like so. Having a furniture float like this can allow you to make things like roofs and floating shelves. There are a few other furniture items that can be stacked, such as turntables and mouse pads. Turntables and mouse pads are great to use if you would like to make minor adjustments to your leveling, so make sure to use them to your advantage. An important thing to remember is that the height of a single building block is equal to the height of 4 turntables, or is equal to the height of 10 mouse pads. It is possible to use other items, such as bookshelves and tables, to level your furniture a lot more quickly, but keep in mind that it isn't as precise. Mouse pads aren't just used for leveling, however, you can also use them within your custom furniture. For example, if you are to stack the small neo mouse pads, you can create things like the smart fridge and these LED light panels, similar to those nano leaf light panels that you see in real life. I have featured both of these in my previous video, the futuristic modern apartment, so be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Something to note though is that there are different properties between the small and large mouse pads. You cannot use the large neon mouse pads to make large blocks of light. You will instead get a bunch of horizontal lines running along the side. Another thing you should know about is how you can make your furniture pieces collide or overlap with each other. To do this, you need to make sure that the furniture pieces that you're trying to overlap are not on the same level. I'll demonstrate it here with building blocks. As you can see, simply overlapping like so will not work, but if you just lift it up using some stackable furniture you can be able to just slip it in there just like that. Using one turntable should work just fine. Make sure the gap is large enough. If you were to use a mouse pad to create the gap, it would not work. Because overlapping furniture requires you to lift an item first, it is important to build from top to bottom if you are planning on overlapping a lot of furniture. Here's another small tip. If you were to move a building block all the way to the very edge of another building block when stacking it, it will move exactly halfway across the block at the bottom. This concept will also apply to a lot of other furniture in Real Citizens too. Anyways, I think that's all the main things that you need to know when you're making your own custom furniture in Real Citizens. There are many other furniture items that you may use, all with their unique properties, so just be creative and explore the ones that work best for you. For the last portion of this video, I'll be attempting to create my own custom piece of furniture to help you all better understand the properties and techniques that I've mentioned. So for this video, I've decided to try and make an arcade machine. Feel free to follow along if you'd like to make this for yourself. We will be building this right in the corner of this empty game room in my anteen villa. We'll start working from the bottom and we'll use building blocks to work our way up. Okay, so it seems like 2 and 3 quarters of a block would probably be best for the part of the arcade machine where it has all the buttons. 3 blocks would be too tall. Since there is no building block that is smaller than the one we currently have in the game, we will have to overlap the blocks together. Because the blocks have the same color and texture, you won't be able to see it clip or like glitch out, so this approach will work out perfectly. Awesome. 
Let's build a back portion of the machine. We will be using building blocks once again. This is where the screen is going to be embedded in. Okay, perfect. It's time to work on the screen of the machine. We will need to find an item in the shop that will work best for this build. So after looking for a while, I found two items that can possibly work great for this. First, we have the laptop. The laptop screen is angled, which is nice since most of the arcade machines that you see have an angled screen. The only problem is the screen is way too small. We will have to find something else. Another item that I was considering is this computer monitor. Seems like this is the best that we can use. Although it is not angled, it's big enough and will be able to fit nicely in our arcade machine. To implement the screen to our machine, we will need to hide the base of the monitor. To do this, we can overlap it with the blocks just like how we overlapped the building blocks earlier. An easy way to have the screen center in the machine would be to have one of the building blocks that I've currently built to be a different color. I've chosen a bright green so that it can be easy for me to see. Once you have it centered, simply change the building block back to its original color. And while we're at it, we might as well change the color of the machine to our desired color. I'll be using this shade of purple for my arcade machine, but you can use whatever you like. For the part that's sticking out a bit on the top, we'll probably have to lower it to where it looks like it is just lifted above the screen of the machine. We want the screen to look as though it fits perfectly in the machine. I will move the building block right to the edge of the building block at the bottom so it will stick out perfectly halfway on top of the one at the bottom. This is where position is extremely important. I will use four square mouse pads so that we are able to lift it up just enough to where we can place our blocks right above the screen. Looks like we're almost done. The last thing I would like to add would be the buttons and the joystick. I also want to add the little coin slot at the bottom. This part may have a lot of overlapping involved, so it's important to work from top to bottom as I've mentioned previously. The highest item that I plan on placing would probably be the joystick, maybe a few of the buttons. We will have one joystick on the left and two buttons on the right. A soft shaker would be perfect for the joystick and the service bells would make great buttons. In addition to that, I think we'll also have some more buttons to the right, this time a bit smaller. We will be using salt shakers once again for the buttons. Since these items are much taller, we will lower this down just a bit. Looks good. 
Lastly, we will place the coin slots right below the buttons above. Again, I've colored one of the building blocks so that I can center it much more easily. I think we should be pretty much done now. The only thing that I need to do would be to fill up the back part of the arcade machine with some blocks. And there you go. Now you have your own arcade machine. Anyway guys, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Please leave a like if it did. Feel free to tag me on any one of my social medias if you would like to share me your creations. I would love to see what you all can come up with. If you have any questions or need for clarifications, leave them down in the comment section and I will try to respond as quickly as possible. Anyways, stay tuned for the new vids. I have a lot of content that I'm excited to share with you guys, so be sure to subscribe to stay updated. I'll catch you guys later. Mm -hmm.